welcome to the first exercise of our course Solar Electric Power Systems. The first exercise will be about shadowing. So the question is how far we have to keep the distance between rows of solar collectors or solar modules in order to avoid shadowing, especially when the sun is in a very low position. We learned that the lowest position of the sun in winter, 21st of December, for example, is about 14 degrees, so quite low. And the exercise is exactly about that. So we saw the, the, the formulas according to that. In order to calculate, we divided that triangle up into two triangles with a, each with a 90 degree corner. And then we were able to calculate the several distances. So D1 plus D2, the formulas were already in the lecture. Yes, you can also go via Pythagoras to calculate D1 and so on. And we apply them now in this exercise. So the first exercise was which distance between two rows of PV modules has to be kept in order to avoid shadowing at least during midday for the whole year. So in summer we won't have any problems because the sun is rather high, but I think the worst case is 21st of December in the northern hemisphere. Uh, but while we are going to Brazil, the southern hemisphere, it's not the 21st of December. It's also not winter there, it's summer there. The worst condition is then at 21st of June. There's the lowest position. We have a position which is 23.5 degrees south and also the elevation angle of the module is also 23.5 degrees. So first question we already almost answered. Does the module have to be directed towards north or south? So we are very much used to see it from the northern hemisphere. So all the modules look towards south because there is the sun. But in this case, while the location of the installation is on the southern hemisphere, we have to face north. So that's a bit different. So the azimuth angle is not 180 degrees, it is zero degrees then. So the requirements for midday of the day with the lowest sun position of the year, as I just explained, it's the 21st of June. The direct irradiance should not cause any shading on the first rows of the module. So this means this alpha, as you saw on this graph before, this should be exactly as high as the sun on midday on the lowest position of the sun. Then we have some data of the module. The modules have a 300 watt each under standard test conditions. They have a length of two meters and a width of one meter. And then there's another question, which requires less space, the horizontal or the vertical mounting? and how much area we need to make a PV power plant with one megawatt under standard test conditions or one megawatt nominal. Then there's another question, if we do not use the 23.5 degrees of elevation angles, but 10 degrees only, whether we save some area and how much is the saving of the area. So let's start. So just to copy the gray part, we approach it like this. So we calculate the suns at the critical elevation angle. This is worst case. That means we have the lowest elevation angle of the sun, which is then equivalent to the lowest or the smallest alpha angle. And this means that it is the largest distance between two rows. And for the southern hemisphere, this is the 21st of June. The sun is then at midday, 23.5 degrees north of the equator. It's our summer because it's approaching us. Maximum it gets towards north is 23.5 degrees. Then the angular difference between the zenithal position in Rio, it's minus 23.5 degrees because Rio is located at 23.5 degrees. And additional 23.5 degrees, that's the sun position away from the equator because it's north of the equator. So additional angular distance of 23.5 degrees. And we have then 90 degrees minus 23.5 degrees minus 23.5 degrees. That's 43 degrees. So our alpha is 43 degrees. So we see this alpha here in a brown color. So this is our angle. So we put in the numbers here. So we have the distance at D1 plus D2 is L. This is our length of the module or width of the module. Uh, this we have also decided later whether we mount it vertically or horizontally. 
the elevation angle of the module or the receiver, which is 23.5 degrees, and then the height and the tangents of this angle alpha of 43 degrees. We can simplify that, uh, then we have only L, and uh, because we substitute H, then we have just cosine of gamma E plus sinus of gamma E divided by tangents of alpha. Just if you put in the number, so this is one meter, I would say it's a length we mounted now uh, horizontally, cosine 23.5 degrees plus a sinoid of 23.5 degrees divided by tangents of 43 degrees. That's then 1.345 meters. That's our distance we have to the big D. Uh, we have to uh, keep between the modules. So D1 is 0.917 degrees. So it's just if you go rectangular, just if you go down here, this is D1. Uh, this is most of the distance, 0.917. And then the part from the shadow is quite shorter. And altogether we have here 1.345 meters. So this was already answered. So it says the module has to be directed towards north or south. Just a repetition, the, during the year, the sun bounces between 23.5 degrees north and 23.5 degrees south of the equator. So north is sure in our summer. This is 21st of June and at 23.5 degrees south of the equator, it's on 21st of December. So for position of the sun of the crater, the solar module sees most of the sun when they are inclined towards north. Second part of the question, horizontal or vertical mounting. If we calculate it, we just calculate it first. We calculate it horizontally. Then this length at the cross section has been one meter. If we now mount it vertically, our length at the cross section is two meters. And altogether, we have a distance we have to keep at two 0.69 meters. So the distance requirement between two rows is now double, but it accommodates the double amount of modules or double the power. At the end, this relative space requirements remain the same. The numbers of modules for one megawatt. So we have the total power one megawatt and we have 300 watt each one. So in total, we need 3,333 modules. And then we have the area requirement. So we have a width of one meter and the distance to six, nine meters, including distance. Then we need 8,965.77 square meters. So what would be the relative saving in a required area if the module elevation angle would be 10 degrees only? So we just put in the number 10 degrees. Gamma E is now 10 degrees. If we put that in, we have a distance we have to keep if the module is now at two meters, then it's 2.342 meters. So the distance is a bit shorter because it was 2.69 meters. So we have a factor of 0 0.87. That means in other words, that we saved about 13% in space to do the flatter installation and the lower shadowing losses. That's the end. Thank you very much. Here's next week for the second lecture 